Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 37th T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. Uh, there are three more weeks to the goal of having a, a ring lotus of T2 tiles, or maybe not arranged in a ring lotus, we'll see, but that many tiles uh, up on the wall, ready to run uh, MFM across all of the tiles to set the first world record for average event rate on an indefinitely scalable computer. We'll see. Uh, last week, uh, we had gotten the simulator, MFMS, uh, converted to MFM T2, where it's no longer a simulator because now it's running on indefinitely scalable tiles. Uh, and we had made the T2 visualizer a little debugging uh, data display thing uh, using the same uh, software that MFM T2 was using made it much better. This past week, it's been all about Linux kernel modules. It's been absolutely terrible, just like I knew it would. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's like, you know, you burn your hand on the stove and then you just can't go back and do it. You know, uh, there's so much stuff that you have to know uh, to go beyond the simple, simple tutorials in Linux kernel modules. And there uh, is so, it's so difficult to debug. And it's not the fault of the operating system. It's just that that's hard to do when the operating system is the thing that can corrupt your entire disk and force you to reinstall everything to come over it. Uh, uh, but I made a lot of progress, didn't get quite to where I wanted to get to, uh, which was to to have the MFM level actually talking to each other in some fashion. It's really close. So I'm just going to go ahead and post the goal for next week to say not just should the MFM T2 be talking to other MFM T2s on neighboring tiles, but they should actually be updating their caches, getting close to doing inter-tile events. That is really terrifying. We'll see what happens. But let's get to the news. All right. Um, oh, yeah. You know... I'm an open source zealot. I use open source software for everything. I All of the stuff that uh, we're doing here is all open source for the benefit of society. And, you know, mostly I feel really, feel really good about that. And every so often I try to use uh, closed source stuff, but I, I end up getting completely aggravated for it. So I put up with all of these rough edges and incompletenesses and missing features and fix it yourself of open source software. And, and I admit sometimes I feel jealous, especially for this Autodesk Fusion 360 that the, for doing 3D printing and 3D um, uh, design, uh, there's really nothing that comes very close to that, as far as I know. There's a thing called FreeCAD, but uh, uh, it's 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 it is a, a, something that I admit that I covet. But on the other hand, uh, this is what open source is all about. Uh, uh, so somebody got in touch um, this week, uh, Unbu uh, on GitHub. They were using my software, which number one was really great. Thank you. Uh, uh, number two, they found a bug in it. Oh, that's really bad. And number three, they fixed it. <laughs> and it's all set up now so that it's really quite easy to just say, you know, here's the fix, do the thing, here's the explanation. And, and I looked at it and I have no idea how it managed to ship out uh, being busted the way it was. And, you know, except for the fact that there's so much stuff to do and I'm putting, I'm making bugs left and right and just trying to hold things together as best I can. The fix was clear and obvious. Uh, I took what they had done, the benefit, I benefited from them having found the bug for me and I applied it so that everybody gets it. That is the power of open source. <sighs> Thank you, Unbu. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's great. Uh, uh, all right, whoops, and I do it again. Uh, all right, oh yeah, an update on last week's uh, story. Where are the DOs, the assembled data-only connectors that have been ordered from PCBWay that were stuck in uh, DHL hell? Uh, um, uh, when we last left off, they had finally reached uh, Los Angeles a week late, and they were going back and forth between being cleared and not being cleared uh, uh, in Los Angeles. Well, they finally got out uh, of Los Angeles uh, a week ago tomorrow, and they uh, uh, actually did arrive. A and there they were. Uh, and what's in that box, we will see in the hardware feature coming in a little bit. So the delivery story. So, you know, once again, I was afraid all kinds of crazy things I was going to be uh, have to do taxes or customs fees or tariffs or something like that. No, 
it just gets stopped. It gets stuck. Someone says, oh, don't worry about it. It gets kicked. You have to do this, that, and the other thing. And then it just shows up. I have no idea why it stopped, why it took no action on my part, no money, no nothing to make it go. It's very weird. All right. And finally, uh, a, a, a new person showed up uh, in the chat room, uh, uh, a guy named uh, Anton Mikhailov, I don't know. Uh, he's a GPU guy, among many other things, as far as I can tell. Uh, graphics processing units uh, that are, you know, really powering an awful lot of the, the machine learning and the AI breakthroughs and all of that stuff that's so trendy uh, today, as well as every possible computer game, uh, AAA, AA, zillion, billion dollars, whatever it is uh, that's out there. They're all on these GPUs. And the GPUs are these absolutely massive amounts of hardware um, that are organized to deal uh, with images in a very general interpretation of images. And they're, they're meant to do the same thing all over the place. Do this, do this, do this, all over the place, extremely rapidly. And... Uh, Anton showed up. He had been doing. He actually is, is a writing simulations of beehives, which is a very natural distributed thing, uh, uh, and so forth. And and wanted to to you know get to, was chatting with us about how we could use GPUs to do MFM events. Which in a way, it's a very it's how, how could it possibly fit? Because MFM events are random. They're scattered all over the place, and the actual code that runs is not the same everywhere. It depends on what element you actually pick, what type of atom you actually pick. Uh, so we had knocked around some ideas. We got to the point where uh, we had an idea about how you could distribute events so that a, a bunch of events, like hundreds of events, uh, could be happening literally in parallel. Uh, on the MFMS simulator, it's simulated. I mean, there, it, it's doing it, uh, it can be doing an event, one event on each simulated tile. So it's not completely uh, fake, but it's nothing like this. And so, and, and Anton's got the skills with the shaders and the code and everything. And I, I was just mostly just, you know, sort of chipping in from the sidelines and saying, wow, that's super cool, uh, because it was. And by the end of the weekend, uh, a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, this is... <laughs> This is a 4K monitor that all of the pixels of the monitor, I mean, it's it's not the monitor is not doing the computation, it's just doing the display. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, you can see this sort of area down in the corner that's a little bit lighter. That That's w w how the thing was actually updating before uh, taking it out to a bigger size thing. The GPU will do these updates on whatever the underlying image you want is. It can even change on the fly. It's absolutely wild. So, the purpose of this, we got to keep it careful, and this is why uh, the headline, uh, whoops, uh, was, uh, where did it go? Uh, there it is. Uh, these GPUs, uh, I mean, they're doing, I, it's hard for even me even to tell. Every one of those little dots that looks like a dot, that's actually an entire event window with an atom in the center. So all of those things can be updating at once, not just pick one and do it. All of those things can be happening at once. It's incredible. I mean, if, if your GPU is powerful enough and so forth. Uh, um, but the GPU design itself is not indefinitely scalable. You are not going to be able to buy more GPUs, strap them in next to each other physically, and take this kind of speed all the way down the line. It's inherently a finite, traditional, even though it's all parallel and SIMD, same instruction, multiple data all over the place. What this is going to allow us to do, hopefully, if we can get it to the point where we can run relatively complex elements on the GPU, it's going to let us sort of live in the future. Uh, we could take something that with indefinitely scalable hardware couldn't possibly run this fast right now. But we can imagine, you know, we could get this large thing and say, well, future designs, when the computer architecture looks go crazy with uh, indefinite, indefinite scalability, which I really hope they will, and it's kind of a goal of this project, is to get to the point where computer architects say, oh man, I can totally beat uh, what Ackley and the T2 project did with their puny little 10 air, 2 air, 1 air, whatever it is, and that's the goal. So. This is fantastic. Welcome, Anton. Uh, everybody's been been chipping in uh, data and statistics and answering questions. Uh, the chat room has been going wild this week. It's great. Uh, um, 
and and that's it oh and then yeah and so then just as an example uh, i still have problems in my uh uh here well you know so look at this thing this is uh, uh, the red is a fork bomb growing the the green is an anti-fork bomb just starting uh, uh this was all implemented just in the last couple of days and this looks a lot like uh using doing it in the mobile feast machine simulator except oh my god look at how many sites there are it's huge it's <laughs> absolutely huge so that's totally great and you know we'll see where that goes so, uh, um, the hardware feature today is, well, I'm just going to run it for you. I'm going to clip it and put it in, and then I'll come back at the end. Five more. Lovely. Wait. They didn't do the assembly? They didn't do the assembly. There can't be extras. So they're supposed to be... One, two, and these are the DOs. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. <coughs> That's 20 on a panel. Oh! What? Five more. All right, good enough. Great. And let's make a few just to make sure we know how. So, what this is saying is they gave me, gave me an extra 20 DOs and 30, 45. 60 extra 75 worth of that which not is. very happy when it's ready to go. Alright. Cruck. That's what we're going for.
it's not a hundred percent, but let's take a peek. Not bad. Could have used. Whoops. Got to be careful. Get that set. holes or something. Alright. So that's it. And uh, here it is. Well, um, and it, it's pretty strong. I mean, we'll see. We'll do some tests to see how well this stuff holds up. But uh, except for the fact that I did a really messy job of it. It's really not too bad. And if the acrylic sheet was then nailed down or mounted onto something so that you could yank tiles out, I really think it would work fine. So that's it. Three more weeks to July 9th. Ring Lotus running on the wall. It could happen. The next update will be up in a week. Have a good week. Thanks for being here.